Okay, this uh, this video is for Mario, who wants to know how to smoke stuff in the backyard. Um, and I'm going to put together my backyard smoker, which is made from just crap that I have hanging around. First thing that I'm going to work with is my coffee can, which I've used a, couple, a church key to put a bunch of holes in the bottom, right like this. And from there, what I'm going to do, this is actually just a piece of... Um, ceramic from the bottom of a, of a flower pot. Doesn't really matter, but I just put that to protect the ground. You're probably going to want that because the bottom of this gets pretty damn hot. And from there... Hold it. Stop. Would somebody please tell me why the camera is now sideways? Is this whole video going to be so amateur? I hope not. Okay. Resume. The next few things that we're going to do is we're going to build a fire in here. I've got some pieces of wood that I just, this is nice soft spruce from 2x4. Um, it burned very quickly. And I'm just going to use that with the paper to start a couple of um, charcoal briquettes. Probably not more than four. Okay. So now I've got my fire blazing with um, this soft wood in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a couple of pieces of charcoal briquettes in there because those are going to burn and keep our smoking wood burning. Now, in this particular case, I just put in five pieces. That should be sufficient. I may throw in one or two more, but I don't want to create too much heat with the particular kind of smoking that I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be co doing cold smoking. So we'll let that burn down a little bit longer. And uh, to let you know what else we have here, we have some wood that's been soaking. Um, this particular wood is a peach, and we found that peach makes an awfully good smoked meat or smoked fish and over here i have some corrugated metal conduit um i believe this was chimney liner um and it's made of stainless steel i believe they also have aluminum that they use for um vents for uh electric and gas clothes dryers and over here I have um, some woods to prop up my grates. I have a grate. This was for cutting the wood. And I just have um, a box that's large enough for the grate. And I'll show you how we put this together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole in the end over here to fit the, um, the vent tube into. And then on the other end, I will make it so that this opens up and I can, and the smoke can come out that side. And then the smoke will flow through from the smoker up here. It'll be cold smoke coming in. We're going to smoke today some fish and some cheese. Um, and then we'll have a nice smoky favor. And we'll also be smoking on the second level um, a rack of baby back ribs. Those will get the smoky flavor and then we'll cook those in the oven later on. So now I've got my fire blazing with um, this soft wood in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a couple of pieces of charcoal briquettes in there because those are going to burn and keep our smoking wood burning. Now, in this particular case, I just put in five pieces. That should be sufficient. I may throw in one or two more, but I don't want to create too much heat with the particular kind of smoking that I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be co doing cold smoking. So we'll let that burn down a little bit longer. And uh, to let you know what else we have here, we have some wood that's been soaking. Um, this particular wood is a peach, and we found that peach makes an awfully good smoked meat or smoked fish. And over here, I have some corrugated metal conduit. 
Um, I believe this was chimney liner. Um, and it's made of stainless steel. I believe they also have aluminum that they use for um, vents for uh, electric and gas clothes dryers. And over here, I have um, some woods to prop up my grates. I have a grate. And this was cutting the wood. And I just have um, a box that's large enough for the grate. And I'll show you how we put this together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole in the end over here to fit the um, the vent tube into. And then on the other end, I will make it so that this opens up and I can, and the smoke can come out that side. And then the smoke will flow through from the smoker up here. It'll be cold smoke coming in. We're going to smoke today some fish and some cheese. Um, and then we'll have a nice smoky favor. And we'll also be smoking on the second level um, a rack of baby back ribs. Those will get the smoky flavor and then we'll cook those in the oven later on. I'm not. I'm filming Mark. I promise you, I swear to God. I'm not filming you. where we cut out for the conduit to bring the smoke right into our smoke box. Now I cut this so it fits snug, but it doesn't matter that there's a little bit of air out on the side. Okay, that fits perfectly. That's blinking. That's good, right? Yes. And then on the other side, I'm going to cut it so that I can open the door. Notice the door's not at the bottom, not at the, at, not at, the top, at the bottom, not the top. Yes. So you don't lose your smoke. And there we go. We'll be able to access everything inside the smoker. Off, and I will retape the door at the top. That's got to cut off. Cut yeah, that off. I will cut that off. It will work perfectly. So if I open up the door, I can see, oh, you know what, <sighs> let me cut that flap on the other end so that it's out of the way, and I'll be able to stick my grates in there and smoke my meats. Nothing like precision work. Stands for the grate. Now, this grate was out of a microwave oven. Why they put a medical grate in a microwave oven, I never know, but it was something we we're going to throw out anyway. And uh, it fits perfectly in here. 
It's stainless steel and it's very nice for the second one. And this would be for the second tier. And we'll put the other grate in on top of that. But for right now, I'm going to go get my meats. Signing out. Okay, and so here you see a couple of slabs of... Um, these are fresh caught Alaskan... Or, 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 or yeah, fresh caught Alaskan salmon, um, which was on sale at the local supermarket. And I have myself a couple of blocks of cheese, which I'm going to smoke. And we're also going to smoke a, a rack of baby back ribs in a few minutes. But actually, this is the first level right now. Um, and we're going to slip this right into the smoker. So we here we have the second tier. This grate is actually out of a barbecue. Um, we cleaned it up before we're using it. Um, and we have here, uh, like I said before, two racks of baby rib back, back ribs. Those are pork ribs. And we have five blocks of cheese. Oh, look at that. Absorbed into the meat as a marinade. And, and for cheeses... We have, oh, and then this is Andy's Gourmet Blackening Spice that he's sprinkling on now. And for the cheeses, we have two blocks of yellow, sharp New York State cheddar cheese, two blocks of white New York State extra sharp cheddar cheese, and a block of pepper jack. And um, we're going to smoke those too because uh, smoked cheese just happens to turn out awesome. Okay. I'm going to slip this into our box smoker, and um, as soon as we do that, we are going to take our metal conduit, run it over here to our can where the charcoals are glowing nice and hot. And when we do that, we're going to put a couple of sticks of um, peach wood that has been soaking so it's nice and wet. And it's going to smoke, not burn. And then we're going to put the conduit right on top. So we've got everything loaded in. We've got two layers. The cheese is right there. You can see that the salmon is on the lower layer. I'm just going to close it up. And that'll work just fine. Now to go over to make the smoke. You can see here now that the smoke is starting to rise out of the, the smoke source. It's going right up through the conduit. One of the things that I had to do just a moment ago is I had to blow the accumulated ash out of the, the breather holes at the bottom of my coffee can. Um, that was keeping um, the oxygen and the air from coming up and circulating through. And if you take a look now, we follow the conduit right along, and you'll see that we have tons of smoke coming out of the smoker now. And um, what I will probably do later on is add more wood to the smoker after that wood burns down. Um, but you're going to have to adjust for how smoky you like your food to be. So you may just want to do one, one set of wood chips, or you may want to do two. For something extremely smoky, you might want to do three, but you can go too far with that. So now my cheeses are out. They're in plastic bags. And I have the fish all put into plastic freezer bags. What I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to I'm going to brine them. And that's what I've been working with is two parts salt to one part sugar for brine. And I'm going to mix it up dry and I'm going to sprinkle it on top of the fish in the bags and then seal them up and put them into the refrigerator for two days. Hold it again. Now the whole screen is upside down. It is making me dizzy.
I hope this scene is over soon before I hurl the groceries. Let's wrap this up guys. So here, I've got the fish. I've uh, mixed up my brining um, powder, which is two parts salt, one part sugar. So what I did is I put in four spoons of sugar, four spoons of salt like that, and two spoons of sugar just like that. Mixed it up pretty well together, and now I'm going to sprinkle it in on top of the fish. Okay, so there we have the four slabs of fish. Before this was three, one was a long one, but I cut that up to fit it into the one gallon freezer bags. Now I put them into freezer bags and I've put the salt on them and I've sucked out the air that was remaining in them. And what I'm going to do is put them into a refrigerator, but I find that it's best to put them onto um, a platter before putting them into the refrigerator or a tan. A, a dish of some sort because in case they leak you do not want fish juice brined or otherwise leaking all over your refrigerator otherwise um, it will smell awful so um, and we're going to leave them in there for two days give these away um, and they're delicious with locks And in case anybody was wondering how we were finishing off those ribs, it's caveman style, right on the grill. So, for anybody who was wondering what all that fuss was about smoking some fish, I've got here a Bialy, and it has... Sliced tomato, sliced onion, a layer of sliced smoked uh, salmon lox, and a layer of cream cheese. And that is just an awesome, awesome sandwich. Um, if you get used to them, if you've ever tried one, you know what I mean. Make sure, though, that you have plenty to drink afterwards because um, the saltiness of the fish is going to make you thirsty and leave you thirsty for the rest of the afternoon.